Welcome back everyone. Um, we did appointment when we looked at when we first get offered it. Now that we've been offered it, we're now going to understand the client. We need to know is the client high risk. We need to know how much cost it's going to take and therefore what fee to charge. And the things we want to look out for are uh, fairly obviously you don't want, you're looking at risk so you don't want there to be obviously any illegal activities. You also look at the nature of the uh, business. Okay, remember we said this before, if it's really fast moving and technological, well, will we be able to keep up to date with it? Because if we can't, there's a risk that we're going to get this all wrong. Um, also, have a look at the economy. Is there a recession uh, in that particular industry? Because if there are, it makes it more risky because, again, you know, the, they've got more risk of going under and us getting the audit risk wrong. We're saying it's a going concern and it's not. Um, look at their audit history. We mentioned this as well about if they've got lots of past qualifications of their audit report, that means they've had lots of problems in the past. That will uh, make us think twice because it becomes a higher risk. We'll have a look at um, the management ability. How good are the management? The management ability, the management integrity. We'll think about will we get access to the documents? Remember, that's one of the things that you um, you only report on if we don't by exception. And then finally, uh, we need to make sure that the client understands the different roles of management and auditor. Okay, they need you need to make sure they understand that because sometimes <clears throat> there's this expectation gap, this difference between what the auditor thinks he's going to do and what the management think that the auditor is going to do. Uh, and you need to make that clear at the very start. <clears throat> okay, so that's um, understanding the client. Now, once you've understood the client, you can then try and win the client. Okay, and that might be through a tendering process tendering okay t e n my writing is terrible on here t e n d e r i n g tendering and that's basically where the client invites lots of auditors to all come and make a quote say right and obviously the cheapest wins normally but it might not be just the cheapest it might be what you can offer all right so if you are going to tender um, then you think to yourself all right what goes into my document what am I going to tell the client about myself? Okay, and the first thing is you outline the firm. Say what we're good at, particularly if what we're good at is their industry, any personnel that's been involved in their industry. Okay, we outline other services that we can offer, so we become a one stop shop. They come to us for their audit, they come to us for their tax, they come to us for their accounts preparation, whatever it might be. Okay. We also show that we understand the client's needs. You've got to be really, really relevant. Okay. They, they would love to read that, wouldn't they? They, they think to themselves, wow, this, this audit firm gets me. They get exactly what I need. So you show that you understand them, and you also show how you can satisfy these needs of the client. So, you know, you're trying to win them over. What you'll also then say is, right, this is how I'm going to do it. My methodology. And any assumptions that I'm making that um, I, I am going to visit all branches or I'm not or whatever. So the uh, methodology. And then finally... You want to set out the nature and the purpose of what I'm doing. Again, you're making it clear, the expectations gap. You do not want arguments later on. So you, you, you say, look, this is why I'm doing it. This is what I'm doing. Are you clear on, uh, on what my role is? And then, obviously, you quote a fee. Okay, uh, and that's it, really. Uh, and then um, you hopefully you win that, and you hope that you hope it wasn't a waste of time. You don't make unrealistic claims, etc. Okay, then let's say that we win the tender. Then the appointment process goes on. So we've looked at the appointment process of when we first get an offer or first get some interest. 
Then we looked at, right, we need to understand the client. Then we looked at, right, making a tendering document if needed. And then, okay, now we say, well, we have got it, so we now need to make a contract. And the contract is what we call the engagement letter because you're going to have an engagement with a client. So we set out an engagement letter, which is basically the contract. And in there, there will be the objectives of what we're doing. Remember, we said that this was really important because of the expectations gap. They expect us to do one thing and we're actually doing another. OK, so similarly and for the same purpose, the managers and the auditors responsibilities. Let's get that clear up front. So we all know what we have to do. OK, let's agree these terms. Then we're going to have a look at the scope. And what I mean by scope is what legislation there are. If it's a highly regulated industry, what regulations we're following. What professional standards we will use. ISAs, for example. Make it all very clear. Management responsibility, by the way, is, of course, for the financial statements. They prepare the financial statements, and all we do is give an opinion on them. Okay. Then we talk about what procedures we're going to use. And because of this limitation gap, we will also talk about the limitations of those procedures. We will not test everything. We will test a sample of everything, and then we just give our opinion. We do not give absolute assurance. We will tell them if we think we are going to use the internal audit team, how much we're going to use them, or if we're going to use outside experts or specialists, okay? That needs to be clear. We then need to tell them about any deadlines. The major deadline, of course, being when we finish, but there may be other ones about how far we will be, what we'll do at certain times, so deadlines that we need, and so that the client knows when we're going to be there as well. We may have already done a risk assessment, and so we can show them this risk assessment if it's been done. And then, really importantly, you mentioned this. You mentioned, right, the communications. It's a partnership. They prepare the accounts. We give an opinion on them. We need to communicate with each other. One of the major forms is a manager representation letter. You say to them, look, we expect this at the end. And what that is, is the management, if they tell us something, maybe orally, you say, right, can you write it down for us and can you send it in a letter? A representation of what they're telling us, a management representation letter. See it in more detail later. We will also tell them any weaknesses we've found, okay, and how we're going to tell them. That needs to be clear in the uh, engagement letter. Any weaknesses in their internal controls, probably. Okay, and then, of course, we will tell them the fee, and then finally, a complaints procedure as well, uh, just in case they've got any complaints. How come, or we've got complaints as well, how is that made? And then you both, so you go through it and you sign it off at the very beginning, so you're trying to clear out any problems before they've occurred.